Swissborg is the official partner of my channel where you can buy, sell, hold, and more importantly, stake your cryptocurrencies. You can even earn yield on your stable coins. Sign up with my link and you'll earn up to $100 worth of their native token CHSB just for depositing 50 euros worth of crypto. Swissborg. Hello everybody, welcome back. Bit of a late start for me today. Uh, is it? I don't know. I suppose it is. It feels late. I've had a late night, that's why. Not out on the town or anything like that. Just up at night, getting kids back into their beds and stuff. Oh. So, uh, this is where we are right now. So we're looking at Bitcoin. First of all, obviously, well, let's just check the old domino effect, shall we? So, I'm just trying to clear as expected. Um, we came down to hit the 50 exponential on the euro dollar chart. To which I um, surmised, I'm, my vocabulary is on fire today, um, that we would move up to either the 21, the 10, or the 200. Uh, not the 200, the 20, the moving average, the uh, Bollinger Band Centre. Uh, and it looks like that's the destination we're moving at at the moment. Um, so, the, you know, based upon the chart, it's working as I can express it. But uh, it was also encouraged by some soft words by the Fed and Biden and everyone like that. But if you take all of that nonsense out of the equation, the chart's doing exactly what it was, you know, what we assumed it was going to do, which is a retest of this lower zone, get reabsorbed back into the Bollinger Band, and then move a little higher before a rejection at any one of these zones, really. Dixie doing exactly the same, but the inverse, like a uh, the negative of a photo, the polar opposite, moved up into, well, I suppose the horizontal and the 50 exponential. Notice how it has done that, but how the, the Dixie chart is a little bit more messy than the Euro chart. You know why that is? Because the Dixie itself doesn't actually get properly traded. It's a barometer of strength and weakness of the dollar. So even though we can use it to determine if the dollar is going to be worth more or less over time, um, it's not as neat and tidy as something like the euro, which is crisp and clean. So this is why I'm using this, because as I know that the Dixie involves, you know, yen, pound and whatever else, Canadian dollar, yeah, all these other things. But the euro takes up the vast majority of the Dixie's power. And you can see how a, a clean tag on this chart uh, has corresponded to a, a slightly messy but inverse tag of this chart. So with all of that said... I'll be looking for a bit further downside on the Dixie and to do exactly what the Euro is doing, but the opposite. So we'll get a, uh, a bounce on any one of these areas, the 21, the 10 or the 20. So that's actually what expected. So with all of that said, <clears throat> we won't bother looking at stocks. With all of that said, what are we expecting for Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin actually did as I expected yesterday, didn't it? I said, look, we're going to be a pretty boring sidewaysy kind of move with the possibility of moving up to the range high of 23,300. Where did we move up to? 23,450. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, not exactly as expected, but we were reabsorbed back down to close the candle bodies below 23,300. And we're still sort of moving and meandering around those areas. Not a massively bullish chart. And on the four hourly, I have to say, not a massively bearish chart either. Um, but what I've noticed when I sort of squinted at Twitter this morning is that people are going on about golden crosses. Yes, you are correct. There is a golden cross down here. I don't focus so much on simple moving averages when they're golden cross, especially for, um, for, for crypto, because they are <clears throat> it's so lagging. I suppose for Bitcoin, it probably has a bit more weight, but they are so lagging. And um, the, mm, I mean, l let me just explain what a golden cross really is. It's the moving averages crossing into the correct areas. So in an in an uptrend, in a classic uptrend, you'll have the shorter term time frame moving averages highest, and the lower term time frames, uh, you know, the higher term time frames being at the bottom. So that means that you know, as far as my chart is concerned, we've got we'll have the two hundreds at the bottom, so the simples and the move uh, and the exponentials. And we'll have things like the 7 simple and the 10 exponential at the top. And each one of those moving averages will be diverging away from each other. Uh, I like to call it a rainbow spread. You won't find that terminology elsewhere. Um, but that's the, the reason I call it that is because they're all different colours and they're spreading like a rainbow. Uh, and and they're diverging deep into the sky, and, and it's the convergence of that that uh, that um, that says okay maybe the trend is slowing, maybe we're coming down for a deep consolidation, blah blah blah. But the beauty of having all these moving averages in the right place is that each one of them, or the ones that I use at least, are a, are a realistic area of resistance support. They're obviously resistance when you're below them, but support when you're above them. And currently on the daily here, we are above all of them. And the fact that we have a golden cross is encouraging because the 50 has to be above the 200 
because that's where it needs to be in the form of an uptrend. So this is saying, okay, maybe the uptrend, well, it's not maybe, the uptrend is likely strengthening. Now, if you are a part of my Patreon live stream, you'll, you'll hear me say over and over and over again, especially recently over the last couple of weeks, that golden crosses are happening. I was saying it at Christmas for the Euro, golden crosses are happening. So this is uptrends and forming, you know, blah, 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 golden crosses. Blah, 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 blah. But what I often will come to expect would be a golden cross retest just to prove to everybody or show that that, that area is a support. Now, I, you know, love obviously charts and I look at charts every day, have done for probably about 10 years now. And what I come to notice is that different charts respond to different moving averages. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and that's fine. I, I like to think of each chart for every, whether it's a coin or a, or a, or a stock or a, or a commodity. There's like a friend that you get to know quite well, and you will know that friend and how they will respond in a different scenario. And when it comes to Bitcoin, they, it, it does respond to a 200 simple moving average. That's true. It does do that. Uh, this is a good example here where we found a massive rejection from it. But for the most part, I found that I find that with crypto especially and Bitcoin mostly, that the exponential moving average, which for me is this white one, is the more significant, right? Uh, exponentials um, are basically moving averages, but they... They, even though they're lagging with the same time periods attached to them, they, they move more dramatically with the volatility. So they go up and down faster. It's a simple overview of it, really. And so with that said, we don't have a golden cross on the exponentials yet. This is, I suppose, relatively common, given the fact that we're coming out of a bear market because the moving averages have diverged faster because they're exponentials, which means that it's going to take a little longer for them to recover and build that... Um, build the divergence of a golden cross for the exponentials. And the 200 exponentials currently sitting at the top of this buy zone at around about 21,400, give or take, right? And again, it's going to move up every day. So, and that would be the area where I would be looking for a pullback into. Maybe not now, maybe a little bit later, maybe once we golden cross on the exponential. So yeah, we've got the golden cross, that is true, but we are looking for an exponential golden cross to really kick it up a, kick it up a gear. Let's just go back in time a little bit to the last bull market beginnings, the humble beginnings of the last bull market, 2019. Who did we see cross first? Similar kind of situation, so a big rally up, big move up. Who crossed first? The simple moving averages did cross what looks like about three or four days before the exponentials crossed. When the exponentials crossed, we got a pullback, a decent pullback, but not a full-on retest, but a, a, a triggered retest of uh, of the 21 exponential and then we powered on through to make a significant high and uh, blowing off our top around 14,000. So I would be still looking for a pullback along the lines with or without this golden cross but especially with the golden cross it seems to be more often than not that that, that is the most likely scenario and again you know I'm not suggesting everyone joins the Patreon but you will if you are members of the Patreon you will probably you will have seen it so many times on the four hourlies and that's now we're looking for it on the dailies because we're getting golden crosses happening on some altcoins on dailies i always say look if you missed the first move that's fine what we're getting now is uh, potentially a really good setup you just got to be patient for it and you've got to look for the breakout the retrace and the golden cross retest and if you are able to wait for that and get it then you're likely in a very significant area with a very good chance of immediate gratification thereafter um so yeah we're all happy to see the golden cross it's not a non-event. It is a real thing. Uh, it's not a signal. It's uh, part of a structure which is forming on a higher term time frame, like a daily here, uh, which is good. One thing I should just say, just just to play devil's advocate, is that if you're excited about the Golden Cross, maybe you should think about the uh, the incoming weekly Death Cross because that is something that's looking like it's unavoidable, and that would likely happen at some point over the next, oh, I mean, maybe even next week. So yeah, if, you, if you're putting all your weight on something like that, maybe have a little think about it. I did make a video about this anyway a few, a few weeks ago, about the death cross on the weekly. It is what it is. Um, it's such a lagging um, trend line on this weekly that I wouldn't put too much weight on it but it is real and um actually i made this i made a video on this before we even broke out here i think yeah you have to go back on my youtube channel if you can be bothered but what i was suggesting is that whether we get well it seemed unavoidable at the time still seems unavoidable now this is whether we get it or not 
and what you'd be looking for would be a bullish, uh, sorry, a bearish retest of this area, which is one of the reasons I was thinking, look, it doesn't matter how you want to cut it. I think we're going to break out into the $19,000 zone, uh, much to the disgust of the bears. Um, that's what I was saying. And, and lo and behold, it happened. So, you know, <laughs> the daily, yes. Golden Cross. Weekly, yes. Death Cross. Um, either way, we look for a move into it to see if it's genuine or not. So we'll be looking for a move down into the Golden Cross, just as we've been looking for a move up into the Death Cross. Anyway, I'll leave with you there. I bet that's um, blagged you Swede, as they say around here. Confused you a little bit. And, um, you know, two completely, the same signal on two different time frames, offering completely opposite uh, counterintuitive moves to what Wikipedia will generally say. Anyway, I will leave it with you there, but thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And leave a comment, because the algorithm would require that of you, if I am ever going to get any new people watch me. Um, anyway, until tomorrow, take it easy.